They do a final dance number, which ends up being this horrid cover of That's the Way, Uh uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it. The irony is that no one involved who made it or watched it liked anything about it. You are about to enter the courtroom of the Honorable Judge Kenny J.D. Does she have any movie critic experience? No. Does she have any authority? No. But they gave her a show anyways. The movies are bad. The cases are good. The rulings are final. This is in defense of... Hi, hello, and welcome to In Defense Of, a More Better production. I am your host and judge, Kenny JD. And on this here podcast doohickey thingy I do, uh, we talk about movies that either bombed at the box office or got bad ratings, and I decide, because I have the gavel here, whether or not they deserve them. If you end up having a fun time here, feel free to like us here on YouTube. Also feel free to listen to us in audio format on either Spotify or wherever else you listen to podcasts. Personally, I think video makes it more alluring because sometimes I just be making faces and you kind of lose some effect through audio. But if you don't want to pay attention and see how cute my hair is right now, if you listen to the audio, you can't see it. I got braids. So this week we're taking a swift, shift in (laughs) tonality, uh, seriousness, because last week we talked about mother, lowercase m, exclamation point with Jennifer Lawrence and the dude that was in uh, for No No Country for Old Men. Um, A lot of people didn't like that movie, but actually really did like that movie. Not now. (laughs) Can't you see mama's working? So that movie, very fucked up incredibly so but if you want to check that out that'll be on more butters youtube channel uh and yeah so this week though we're gonna take a swift uh (laughs) swift change from the dark and depressing and ominous and really fucked up and today we're gonna look at uh from justin to kelly 2003 which is the movie that the first season of american idol winners uh kelly clarkson and justin Gorini, Gorini, every week, babe. We do this every week. Justin Guarini, Guarini. Here you go. Um, <laughs> it's their movie that they were contractually obligated to do after the end of the first season of uh, American Idol. It's long been touted as one of the worst things ever made. If you can imagine, it is a musical, so already on a great foot for me. Love musicals. <laughs> But it makes it even funnier because Kelly Clarkson also hates this movie and had no desire to be a part of it, but was forced to do so again because she won American Idol. She was hoping that if uh, <laughs> if she didn't win, she wouldn't have to do it. Uh, she didn't want to win because she didn't want to do this shitty movie. And girl, I hear ya, but alas, here we are damn near 20 years later and you're still rocking it babe so good for you justin garini is also around he's the (laughs) he's the sweet one (laughs) in the dr pepper commercials sweet sweet that commercial was always fucking hilarious to me and uh anything that encourages people to drink more dr pepper i'm all with it because people be talking down on dr pepper it tastes like cough syrup First of all, y'all drink that battery acid Sprite from McDonald's. So don't say anything about something tasting like it's for medicinal purposes. Y'all are taking lighter fluid. (laughs) I'd rather it tastes like cough syrup than gasoline. All right, anyway, but let's start talking a little bit about some accolades. Cause again, this movie is known for being particularly terrible. It is a film that was listed in Golden Raspberry Awards founders John Wilson's book of the official Razzie movie guide of one of the 100 most enjoyably bad movies ever made. That was a very long sentence, but basically the people that uh, say what are bad movies said, this is up there with one of the most enjo- most enjoyably bad movies ever made. I disagree. I found this movie torturous. <laughs> but I guess it's because I don't like musicals. The choreography was considered so bad that a special Golden Raspberry Governor Award, quote unquote, was created as an excuse to present the film with a Razzie. (laughs) 
Total Film Magazine ranked the film at number 16 in their list of 66 worst movies of all time. And it was also nominated at the Stinker Movie Awards. When will I get an invite? I got managers for it. People make it happen. I got managers for this. Hello, where is my invitation to the Stinker Awards? To the raspberries? I'd be a great host for the raspberries. Come on, with this skin and this effortless humor, somebody make me, I would be, Razzies, my email. <laughs> I'm probably more reasonably priced than other people you get to present stuff out there. My people call your people, your people call my people, and we can get something going. At least invite me. I want to know what are the worst movies of the year, okay? Well, I know anyway, but like, I want to be there. I'm going to see them win that particular accolade, damn it. But yeah, this movie was nominated at the Stinkers Bad Movie Awards. Uh, <laughs> For awards such as Worst Picture, Worst Director, Worst Actor, Worst Actress, <laughs> Worst Fake Accent Female for Kelly Clarkson, who plays like a Texan. And I was like, I was watching it. I was like, was she, was she Texan? I don't recall her having an, like a very distinct Texan or Southern accent. And cause she's Texan for the movie. So <laughs> worst on-screen couple going to Kelly and Justin and worst on-screen group for the Pennsylvania Posse, who is Justin's friend group. Um, and it ended up winning an award for worst song for the song called Anytime. I know I'm getting ahead of myself right now, but the music in this movie, fucking atrocious, fucking terrible. And then you combine it with the fact that the music adds nothing to the movie. It makes the movie damn near unwatchable and it was bad even before we started singing. Uh, and the music adds nothing to the storyline and none of the music have anything to do with the storyline. They just put random pop tunes inside of a movie and makes it oh, like screech to a halt just so that y'all can be like here's some songs bitch we told them they had to make this movie and they're making it okay fine so some fun facts it was released in theaters on june 20th 2003 and on dvd slash streaming august 26 2003 again it stars three actually three uh american idol contestants justin guarini Kelly Clarkson and Catherine Belize, who I didn't remember from American Idol. And there's a scene with Catherine in which she sings again, a very random ass song and they give her like a solo number. And it is the most, her voice is so fucking annoying. I don't, <laughs> and I was like, why did she get a solo? Why does she get the solo? I thought that there ends up being like a black friend for Kelly that had a little bit of a solo of, of in like a B plot. And I was like, oh, was she on American Idol? Cause she sounds, she sounds good. I don't think she matched well with the, with the music that was playing. I think other songs would have been better for her voice, but she sounded good. So I was like, was she also on an American Idol? And apparently she wasn't. But for some reason, the person that sound worst out of everybody also got to be in this movie because she was pretty and blonde, my theory is. Uh, her voice was fucking annoying. I'm sorry. I hope you're doing well, babe. I hope you're doing good. I hope you're doing great things. Hope it's not singing. Okay, so it's directed by Robert Iskoff and produced by 20th Century Fox Studios. Again, as I was saying before, Kelly Clarkson did not want to be in this movie. It is, she has stated several times actually in interviews, which I find hilarious. She has no, she was like, I am not afraid to say that I never wanted to be a part of this bullshit. She pleaded with the creators of American Idols to be relieved from the contractual obligation to star in the film. Again, in interviews, she said straight up, the only reason I did the movie is because I was contractually obligated to do so. Quote, I knew when I read the script, it was going to be real, real bad. <laughs> but when I won, I signed that piece of paper and I could not get out of it. Some theater chains threatened not to screen the film at all when 20th Century Fox announced plans to rush it to VHS and DVD a mere six weeks after its opening weekend. But Fox ultimately relented and pushed the release date back a number of months. After underperforming its first week, Fox reinstated the original release schedule and the film was released via home media on August 26, 2003. 
With that said, I guess I should have put this in accolades. The movie was better received with younger audiences, as you could imagine. This movie does feel very like cheaply made, too old high school musical. Um, but it was better received at the Teen Choice Awards as it was nominated for two uh, choice movie breakout stars for Justin and Kelly and choice chemistry. In the box office in its opening week from Justin to Kelly grossed $2.7 million in a little over 2,000 theaters in the United States and Canada, ranking number 11 at the box office. By the end of its run on July 24th, 2003, the film had grossed uh, $4.9 million in the domestic box office. And considering it spent for some reason $12 million in its budget, it was an absolute Failure, love. Failure, it was so bad. <laughs> so critical reviews, it got 8% on the tomato meter uh, for critics and audiences gave it a little under 40% at 39%. Um, <laughs> all of the top critics are bad. This shit is terrible. Um, from the Boston Globe, Wesley Morris says, what's depressing about From Justin to Kelly, whose title seems to refer to the text messages he sends her, is that it's been made without a lick of love, skill, or apparently money, which not true, babe. They spent double digits of millions of dollars for, to make this movie somehow, and I'm truly astounded. Um, New York Daily News, Jack Matthews, easily the worst beach movie ever made. Owen Gleiberman from Entertainment Weekly, how bad is from Justin to Kelly? Set in Miami during spring break, it's like Grease, the next generation acted out and by the food court staff at SeaWorld. <laughs> so, to it seem, it was not a hit amongst the critics. Synopsis. In this musical, college student Justin Gorini, Gorini, there you go, arrives in Fort Lauderdale, Florida for spring break with his friends Brandon and Eddie and quickly crosses paths with waitress Kelly. Although Justin falls for Kelly almost instantly, Kelly's jealous friend, Alexa, played by the chick whose voice I can't stand, tries her best to keep the two apart. With the help of several song and dance numbers, however, Justin and Kelly eventually connect and make sweet music together. <laughs> Usually after a synopsis like that, I'll go into the actual point by point of the storyline. I simply will not waste your time and mine doing that. <laughs> Cause essentially what I just read you is it. Just imagine like a breakout pop, like early 2000s pop R&B, pop hip hop, weird choreography thing and everybody looks like they don't want to be there <laughs> but yeah that's it kelly goes to fort lauderdale with her friend the, the blonde is jealous of any attention that kelly gets and she tries to um get with justin instead at the end justin and kelly get together and they make songs along the way just know that it's a movie on the beach where justin and kelly are trying to get together alexa is their rival trying to stop the love from happening and along the way they dance terribly i will say the songs if they weren't in this movie probably are fine they're honestly they're probably songs that were made completely independent of this movie they are i was i said probably they are songs that were made completely independently of this movie they had a whole album already done and we're like we're gonna figure out to just put songs in here that again don't progress the storyline at all they are just random ass pop love songs and people staring out wistfully across the ocean and at the beach and dancing in bikinis at parts <laughs> and that's it that's the movie um, I would say if you would like to engage at all with this movie, just listen to like the soundtrack because <laughs> you don't get anything by viewing the dancing or any of the other visual parts of this movie or listening to anybody act terribly. <laughs> I will say that Justin and Kelly can sing their asses off, but we already knew that. So again, why don't we just listen to the album and not have to do all this? I don't want to do all of this. But but also, in fairness, though they're good singers, a lot of these songs actually really suck. Like the songs themselves are pretty bad. So they can, they do fine. You know, Kelly will hit you with a high note and you like, okay. But it's still the song itself, low key suck. <laughs> Except for that love one kind of, 
can't feel the vibe Maybe can you feel the love? I was like, okay, this is giving me, you know, early 2000s and the block is hot, giving me 112. It kind of sounded like peaches and cream. There you go. The dun 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 Get a freaking dun 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 Know what I mean? Peaches and cream. That's why I like that song. <laughs> it just listen to 112 Peaches and Cream. Don't do this. Anyway, uh, yeah, so that's the movie. Shocker, they do end up together. They do a final dance number, which ends up being this horrid cover of that's the way uh-huh uh-huh i like it <laughs> the irony is that no one involved who made it or watched it liked anything about it so if this is how you like it i'm very sorry uh <laughs> anyway so final verdict yeah obviously guilty if that's not obvious uh guilty I don't know my own strength. One day I'll learn. Okay. Yeah, this movie sucks. Uh, <laughs> this movie sucks. The songs suck. If you can interact with the music completely independent of the movie, maybe you'll much better enjoy them. But the music is just this thing that we just have to get through. Like again, old girl that I can't stand her voice. She, she does a whole solo while waiting at the bar. And the song has nothing to do with like what she plans to do after while she's at the bar it's just she's sitting at the bar she sings this annoying ass song i'm gonna watch upon a star and she does like a dance number or whatever and then when she's done she just twirls and sit back in her seat and continue drinking the same drink she was drinking before i was like why did you make us do that any of us why did you make her do that why did she why did you make us watch that why did you force that on us? <laughs> like, we didn't have to do that. This movie is terrible. But I guess if you like a particular type of terrible, like, I can't do bad musicals. I can't do musicals in general for the most part, but I certainly can't do a bad one. Life is very short. I cannot spend the finite time that one has on this planet to watch bad musicals. Absolutely not. But anyway, if you've seen this, if this was somehow a part of your childhood or just your time of the early 2000s, if you really liked it, if you really hated it, if you like it and hate it, like you have like, you know, it's a bad movie that you enjoy ravenously. Apparently uh, Ariana Grande thinks it's a, like a masterpiece of suck. But if you have any opinions on it, I would love to hear it. Argue amongst yourself in the jury box, the comment section. Um, and again, feel free to follow us here on More Butter. Feel free to follow me, I'm Kenny JD. You can find me on social media as Shocker Kenny JD on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. Kenny JD. Um, also, feel free to check me out on Camp Counselors, also here on More Butter. Um, it's been a fun time hanging out with Mr. Gigi and Amanda the Jedi. So check out those. And without further ado, I'm going to send you guys off. Don't forget to butter your popcorn. <laughs>